you sir good morning all of you okay myself jogendra kumar one of the coordinators department of pharmaceutical analysis associate professor ragu college of pharmacy inviting you cordially inviting you all, all the faculty members of all pharmacy colleges all over india welcoming you all for this one week faculty development program on holistic approaches for excellence in pharmaceutical education research and publishing conducted by ragu college of pharmacy visakhapatnam andhra pradesh now we have on board four members along with me one is convener of this program dr jagdish panda principal ragu college of pharmacy visakhapatnam and my colleague one of the coordinators dr k padmaja associate professor department of pharmacognosy ragu college of pharmacy visakhapatnam and today's faculty development program speaker eminent speaker dr k p r choudhary sir research director vikas college of pharmaceutical sciences rajmandri welcoming you all now i take this opportunity to hand over the session to convener of this program dr jagdish panda sir sir please take over sir thank you respected today's speaker professor k p r choudhary sir my teacher now the renowned researcher in pandra university my co my colleague and dr padmaja and other colleagues distinguished principals of the different uh, colleges and participants from the different country and of this country for all of you good morning and welcome to this uh, one week one week uh, efdp first of all uh, at the outset i must thankful to professor k p r choudhary sir my teacher my mentor till today forever the moment when i asked him sir, i want to conduct this one and these are the titles uh, i am expecting this to conduct uh, with some objective then sir told okay proceed and he sent that one and immediately he scrutinized it and uh, he gave the this one Similarly, my other of Sir K V Ramanurthy Sir also from the last one month uh, is uh, initiating me for doing such good program. And first of all, I my gratitude I express my gratitude to all my teachers. And uh, the outset before uh, speaking about uh, uh, this, the objective of uh, the program is. even in a primary education teachers are coming with a bed education or tet education but whenever in a higher education learning system where the teachers are not having such kind of the training and uh, after coming over here we are giving trainings and also even fdp participating for 15 days or one week days at other places is very difficult that especially nowadays the teachers are all mostly the ladies only so this is the problem for them leaving the family and attending for the fdp for long days is very practically problem even in uh, colleges also sending the two to three uh, faculty members for any fdp also is very difficult so this time during this covid uh, we found that it is an opportunity for many of us and to attend the fdp so with this object to and especially taking the care of the teachers what a teacher is a true uh, truly that uh, the beginner who what is he actually is requires what to teach how to teach what are teaching methodologies after that what are the after some time one or two year experience they have to register for once they register how to do this what are the research methodologies and once they do starting doing some research okay how to manage the you know research publications how to write scientific writing and all these things are required for any a uh, beginner in the academic line and after that also you know uh, the present day you know that what we are doing all are remote learning so the new technology has uh, evolved uh, in such a way that uh, the you know remote learning digital learning is an essential part nowadays for anybody in the society especially in the academic line it is highly essential so expecting all these things uh, the best uh, people in this uh, 
area of digital technology exposed like uh, professor dr ahmed sir also uh, invited and the, there are uh, uh, from 22nd to 28 27 so this is uh, what uh, we have the uh, very good program so from 22nd to 28 with an uh, this one holistic approaches for excellence in uh, pharmaceutical education research and uh, publication so this is the what the the title of this program that's why we kept so in areas like pharmaceutical education research and how to publish this all these areas we want to cover so the uh, 22nd we have uh, uh, professor k p r sir today after this inaugural okay so research in pharmacy principles and practices that is a, a great teacher with a 44 years of experience he is going to give us and next on uh, another a very distinguished person professor dr munir ahmed or is the the director of uh, rajiv gandhi health university is one of the the best man in the digital learning and uh, offline and online in, uh, education is one of the pioneer so he has given a lot of uh, you know before this covid only gave, he participated in a very many fdp especially so he is a man in the medical field he is uh, very much uh, attached with the pharmacy fraternity so i feel that he is the right man to this fdp we invited him he, uh, uh, he is uh, uh, accepted and uh, very much thankful to him similarly one of the very renowned personality a very distinguished personality from the punjab university dr bupender singh bho so whose name is very very known to entire pharmacy fraternity entire the globe so he is uh, actually is uh, as uh, on 23rd uh, so ethical publishing of pharmaceutical research uh, rigors and vigors so this is with this uh, wonderful title is with us and similarly on fourth uh, very known fraternity and uh, very proud alumni of andhra university dr rao vsv vadla modi so he is the the commonwealth pharmacist association president and uh, and uh, he is a lot of uh, especially his experience we notable here is he is the editor of the uh, the journal which is run by the pharmacy apti so where is the editorial knowledge lot of uh, knowledge is there where we can uh, gain lot of information from him from his speech that is uh, you know Uh, what scientific writing and publishing in a journal that is especially one of the pioneer in that area so obviously we i felt that is a right man and he accepted and uh, very much thankful to him and similarly another uh, a very important area that uh, all the education in higher education they are going for the you know uh, accreditations for the different boards like nba and uh, nat so hence uh, i felt it is an essential that uh, to motivate the the learners that to uh, beginners that uh, so where uh, why we require all these things so dr vilas vijay kharjini a director kolapur institute of technology and uh, college of engineering especially he is the one of the nac uh, you know i am the pioneer committee is there okay so he is also very much uh, in the is uh, presenting all the inspections okay so and friends uh, he uh, we requested and he gra- gladly he accepted and uh, we will uh, we are very much thankful to him and similarly another distinguished personality is there with my teacher um, professor k v ramanamurthy one of the very best researcher and uh, motivator to uh, all of us and uh, he is with us and uh, he is going to teach the very important in the pharmaceutical uh, you know syllabus has been changed you know all of you in a pci new syllabus has been uh, you know now amended in everywhere so adapted so where the uh, teaching methods laboratory skills and the practice schools uh, for the pharmacy which is very important and essential and uh, i will very much grateful for him this wonderful contribution for this fdp program and presently sir is working as a principal for the pharmaceutical college of college of pharmaceutical sciences andhra university and another eminent speaker for the last day on 28th uh, on the 7th day my teacher professor dr j vijay ratna madam garu is with us and uh, my interest was actually i expressed in front of her that pharmaco vigilance uh, a syllabus which is newly adapted uh, introduced in the pca syllabus so hence uh, i requested her to speak about the pharmaco vigilance which is she is a right uh, teacher that uh, she is actually uh you can say a founder teacher in pharmaco vigilance in andhra university where she did lot of hard work and a lot of contributions so as a great teacher she is 
and I, uh, I requested and she gladly accepted and very much thankful to madam sir, madam and with this uh, these all these objective uh, we have started this uh, fdp program and uh, and at this contest i should express my gratitude to the my chairman beloved chairman sri kalidin ragu and madam rama devi garu and uh, young director rahul varma and for this uh, their uh, anchor sustain encouraging this ragu college of pharmacy was established under the eminent leadership of uh, uh, sri k kalidin ragu sir is one of the very good philanthropic and educationalist it was established uh, under the ragu education society which was established in the 1980s uh, 90 uh, 1986 1986 then they started the ragu engineering college in 2001 and ragu education ragu institute of engineering that rbt that is in 2007 ragu college of pharmacy in 2007 since then uh, we are doing a wonderful work and uh, the both engineering college are uh, approved by the nac uh, nba and atmas and in the same way we are in the pharmacy college also we are in the, in the same direction we are propagating so with this uh, introductory remarks and uh, once again i welcome all the participants from the different countries and this country principals and other academia friends and colleagues students research scholars and once again i welcome warm welcome to all of you and uh, doubt said definitely i'll uh, assure that uh, I, at the time of the leaving you all have the very good wonderful uh, uh, you know memories as well with good knowledge uh, uh, you will uh, have in this definitely you all participate sustainably so that uh, uh, definitely you will have the very good uh, uh, you know knowledge after end of this uh, this fdp thank you uh, one and all and thank you mr jagannath for giving this opportunity మీ వాయిస్ మీ అన్మ్యూట్ అయి ఉంది అన్మ్యూట్ చేయండి నౌ కేపిఆర్ చౌదరి సార్ విల్ స్పీక్ ఆ జోగేంద్ర జోగేంద్ర సార్ జోగేంద్ర సార్ మేడం గారికి ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ చేయమను నౌ Dr. Now, Dr. K. Padmaja, Madam, will introduce our eminent speaker. Thank you, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Myself, Dr. K. Padmaja, working as Associate Professor in Raghu College of Pharmacy, Vishakapatnam. It's my great privilege to introduce today's eminent speaker, Prof. K. P. R. Chaudhary, sir. sir is one of the senior most professors of pharmacy in india having 44 years of experience in teaching research and administration in pharmacy he served as professor of pharmacy hod chairman bos faculty dean and principal in andhra university for over 34 years presently sir is working as research director at vikas institute of pharmaceutical sciences rajmandri and as advisor in academic and research at siddhartha college of pharmaceutical sciences vijayawada he served as chairman of bos in pharmacy of jntuk kakinada from 2011 to 2018 sir successfully guided 100 phds and 165 mpharms sir published 460 research papers with total citation 3022 and author of two textbooks sir is a member of aict southern and south central regional committee and nba sectoral committee new delhi sir received 17 national and state awards notable among them are eminent pharmacist 2019 award of ipa mumbai lifetime achievement award in pharmacy 2017 from abap india professor cj shishu award for research in pharmacy 2014 from apti principal of the year 2008 from apti pharmacy teacher of the year award 2003 from apti best teacher award 2007 from government of ap ap uh, scientist award 2002 
from the government of Andhra Pradesh. We are very much fortunate to have such an eminent personality with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Sir will deliver the lecture on the topic research in pharmacy principles and practice. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam, for your nice words about me. And first of all, I extend a warm welcome to you all to this session. This program today is starting with my presentation. I consider it as a privilege to interact with all of you through this EFDP. And I know about Raghu College of Pharmacy since its inception. And it's one of the best colleges which is caring for the quality of education at all levels. And several, several seminars and development programs are being conducted earlier. And now, we are in the middle of the COVID-19 and now it's not possible to organize such seminars and other events in the institution and hence several colleges are silent over these activities and I am very glad to say that Raghu College is the first one in this area in Andhra Pradesh to have a faculty development program online and which will be very much convenient, which will be very much useful to all the faculty. And coming to this faculty development program, so first of all, I thank Dr. Jagadish Panda the principal of the college and his team members for giving me an opportunity to associate with this activity. And the several times earlier, I interacted with the teachers on several aspects, but this is a different one. It is the first time I'm experiencing a presentation, particularly to the faculty under the title Faculty Development Program in the light of COVID. So it's one way, COVID is transforming, COVID-19 particularly, transforming the educational system. It is clear on today that EFD is Faculty Development Programs have been introduced by interesting institutions and groups. And this is a change, and which is a positive sign that we are entering into a new era of teaching methods. And hence, everyone has to equip well with the methodology, with the practices, of organizing and delivering the lectures through online. And it's not only for the FDP, and the same system will definitely continue in the coming years with an advantage that we can invite any person from anywhere and uh, he may be exposed to the faculty and students in, a, in an institution. In a institution for their benefit. And hence, a wonderful task has been taken up by the Raghu Institution, particularly by Dr. Jagadish Panda. And I have seen the brochure, and I surprised to see that wonderful topics are drafted by Dr. Jagadish Panda, and eminent people from across the country 
are invited as speakers for the benefit of uh, the faculty and normally the object of any fdp is uh, to enhance the knowledge skills and to motivate the faculty and principals towards achieving the excellence and uh, that is the general uh, general objective and uh, aim and fitting into this overall objective the theme of this fdp is drafted as the holistic approaches for excellence in teaching research and paper publishing and reaching quality through accreditations and all important aspects of the pharmaceutical education are covered in this fdp and a series of lecture programs are arranged daily they can most convenient time in the morning session and already dr jagdish has pointed out and introduced the speakers and i find in the list eminent personalities and topics are very very interesting and for example we have the topics ranging from the related to education like like the educational planning educational planning for offline and online teaching so offline teaching we are well equipped acquainted with over years and this online teaching though it is there especially in the pharmacy colleges in the remote areas and uh, this is not being implemented so far and hence the one uh, presentation by dr munir ahmed from rajiv gandhi university of health sciences karnataka was invited and definitely it will be helping all the institutions particularly the principals and faculty to plan a, the online programs here after and uh, such that all institutions uh, whether they are in the urban area or in the rural area can excel in the in this area and similarly the teaching methods yes panda rightly pointed out that even for the school education college education especially school education there are programs to train the teachers through education courses like bed med are available and all the school teachers they are with that qualification only and hence they are rigorously trained in the ways and means of teaching conveying the knowledge and motivating the student to learn and such other practices the well versed but whereas it is very unfortunate that uh, coming to higher education the university and college level education there is no such requirement that every faculty selected for a teaching position college and university should acquire a ba degree it's not there and hence the fresh many times what happens is a fresh pg from any from a university in any subject is drafted as a teacher into the college this is happening in all the pharmacy colleges even in the engineering colleges etc and they are not knowing exactly how to retain the attention of the student and how to motivate them to learn the subject etc and hence such sort of training is needed and earlier here and there such programs are being conducted but it's not uh, reaching all institutions and hence a wonderful to uh, topic is proposed and being organized during this uh, fdp which will definitely be helpful to all the colleges 
for arranging these online teaching programs. And uh, then uh, the teaching methodologies, okay, because there is no formal training for teaching methodologies, and particularly the pharmacy is a skill oriented program. Several, several laboratory skills, research skills are needed to effectively discharge the responsibilities as a, a teacher in a pharmacy college. And, uh, and hence, the laboratory skills are very important and which unfortunately lag behind the students entering into the PG program, into the doctoral program, also sometimes lack proper training and could not do the experiments properly or could not handle the instrumentation properly. Later on in my presentation, I will stress on the need for the skill in the research area. And similarly, the all of all of us we started implementing the uniform B form syllabus. And one of the major change made in this uh, syllabus is uh, the introduction of practice school. And hence initially nobody knows what is this practice school. Practice school when initially started. And later on, several discussions were held and several places uh, the programs, training programs were given to teachers and only certain teachers got benefited. And hence, Dr. Panda rightly selected the topic of uh, this teaching methods, practical skills and the practice school concept and how it should be organized. And the speaker is uh, a, a very young and dynamic teacher, researcher, administrator, a very successful in, in all these areas. He is none other than Dr. K. V. Ramanamurthy. And I feel very proud that he is my best student and my first PhD student with me and he exceeded in several respects. And uh, even along with you, I am also eagerly waiting for the, his presentation on these aspects. And similarly, other speakers like the scientific paper writing is really a challenge because not many teachers, not teachers in the sense, not only freshers, young teachers, even the senior teachers, even the professors, they could not write a scientific article properly because earlier that topic is not considered as that much important and emphasis is not laid uh, earlier. But now the paper publication, particular research paper publication is a very important uh, aspect for any institution, teacher for the assessment. And in all the assessments of the institutions, like in the NBA assessment, in the NAC, NAC uh, assessment, and uh, the ranking, NIRF, rankings, etc., a lot of emphasis is given to publications. Publications are standard, and hence, here, he, the organizers have invited a wonderful uh, speaker an eminent personality in pharmacy and he is uh, Dr. Rao Vadlamodi and for a long time as, as uh, much as 24-25 years he worked as the editor for the famous journal Indian Journal of Pharmaceutical Sciences and uh, developed the journal into one of the best in the country and having international reputation. And certain good practices are being implemented by Dr. Rao in this journal. And uh, many teachers who know will be definitely knowing how difficult it is, how difficult it is to make a paper to accept in this journal. And uh, so he is going to present a talk on the paper publication, etc and how to select a journal and what care you have to exercise to get the best publication with good uh, ranking etc. And similarly another wonderful lecture organized 
is by uh, Dr. Vishal uh, Vijay. And it is related to capacity building. It is related to capacity building of institutions and teachers. Both are equally important. Institution as a whole and a part of that is a teacher's individual. And so capacity building is needed now. This is possible only through the concept of quality. And quality has to be introduced into the pharmacy education at all stages. Then it is possible to build up capacity. And particularly this quality build up and quality issues when they are implemented properly, you now certainly a, an institution can face the accreditation boldly and they will be successful in getting good accreditation points. And similarly, the I think uh, the sixth one or so, seventh one, is uh, a presentation on an emerging area, on a topic of emerging area, that is pharmacovigilance. Pharmacovigilance, what exactly it means, and uh, it's uh, very important nowadays in the light of the introduction of many biosimilars, etc., and biological drugs, they always create problem. And uh, unless you monitor them continuously, it's not possible to ensure the safety in the public. And hence, today the government of India is also considering a lot of importance to the pharmacovigilance. So pharmacovigilance program of India is drafted and such other important things will be discussed by Dr. Vijay Ratna, Madam. She is also happened to be my student only. Did all B farm, M farm, PhD with me in Andhra University. And a very dynamic lady. And uh, it is, uh, all uh, the teachers are uh, teachers attending this FDP are in a way I consider them very fortunate uh, to hear uh, the speeches by these uh, eminent personalities eminent personalities and now coming I'm not going to take much of your time and coming to other things other things now uh, I wish uh, the program a grand success and certainly the program will be very much helpful to the, all the faculty and particularly the principals <coughs> who should uh, motivate and guide their teachers and hence uh, this program will definitely help in upgrading our skills and our capacity it is in a way is a program of capacity building in the faculty and uh, principals or institutions certainly all the principals and faculty will certainly get benefited by this program and i wish all of them Good luck in their future endeavors. Thank you. And I now take uh, pleasure uh, in uh, delivering uh, my lecture or presentation. And uh, yeah. <clears throat> so good morning again, all of you. Is it, is it uh, clear, the PPT? Hello, I'm stoned the bomb the voice of the Hello. Thank you. And now I will be starting my presentation. This titled as Research in Pharmacy Principles and Good Practices. And after seeing this announcement, after seeing this announcement, and it, after seeing uh, this title, several Teachers telephoned to me and inquired, Sir, you used the word good practices. What are these good practices? I know only about 
the practices related to manufacturing as GMP, practices related to uh, the uh, non-clinical laboratory work, they are known as the good laboratory practices, and practices related to clinical, they are known as the clinical practices, good clinical practices. Then I said, this good research practices combine all the three. In a way, it is combining all the three are very much useful for conducting and organizing quality and good research in any discipline. And hence, this is a, a topic which is very much important for the faculty of all the disciplines. And uh, now this concerns with the research, research in pharmacy. And first of all, we see what is this research. We are using this term more frequently, research. And uh, research simply means it is a scientific, planned organization of the work leading to the generation of a generation of new knowledge. The research should always aim at a generation of new knowledge only. And hence, the research, if you consider in this perspective, is very important for industry as well as for academics. How it is important for industry, you know very well that pharma industry is a research-based industry. Pharma industry is research-based industry. And without research, they cannot continue and they cannot reach commercially. And so research is inevitable and all the pharma industry continuously doing research to generate newer and newer drugs, newer therapies, newer treatments, newer devices, and then they commercialize it. And similarly, in academics, means institutions, research is more important. Research is more important and equally important to teaching. So teaching and research are considered as two eyes, two faces of a coin for an institution, particularly for a pharmacy institution. And academics means the, okay, the teachers and the students. <coughs> And they should have the research orientation, have the research orientation. Particularly, the faculty is at most important. The faculty is considered as the, always the backbone for development of an institution. And the faculty should acquire all the skills needed. One important skill is that they should be able to do good quality research at the same time. They should also be able to guide these learners in the research activities. And you know that research is given a lot of emphasis in uh, academics, institutions, particularly, particularly, we are all teachers. And if you attend for a screening and evaluation process by any organization or your employer or government, governmental body, etc. So major emphasis is given to research, particularly the research publications. Okay, because teachers teaching, they are doing good and they are achieving the good result. And uh, the students' success is considered as uh, the evidence for teaching. Unless the teaching is not done properly, the student success may be at a low level. And by taking a measure like student success, certainly teaching is assessed. And regarding the research, how it is assessed is by testing the research capabilities of the faculty and the institutions as a whole. And that is the reason why in all the modern accreditations by the NBA and NAC and such other bodies, and even, okay, even for sanction of projects or grants, etc., it is evaluated 
the performance of the teacher in terms of research. Like they used to ask questions like, what are our research publications? Research publications. Okay, now, I'll join this. Your battery is low. Is it close? Uh, sorry for the disturbance. There is a little problem with the battery. Okay, now it's good. Now we are discussing about the importance of research in academics. So the in all these instances which we I, can, I named earlier, so the teachers will be asked with the questions regarding how many papers you have. What they verify what is the standard of these papers, research papers, and how many projects they could guide with governmental support or industry support, etc. And similarly, they may also inquire how many patents they have. So all these are related to research only, and hence, unless a teacher establishes himself as a good researcher and carry out good quality research and achieve good publications and it's not possible to consider him or him or her or the institution as a successful institution and in this regard all of you may be knowing recently the rankings national rankings by NIF has been announced last month and I have gone through carefully and uh, they announced the first 100 ranks and it's happy on one side that from Andhra Pradesh three universities which are very well established Andhra University, Mahila Shrijalayam and uh, Acharya Nagarjuna University and five self-financing colleges like private colleges are only find, find, found, find a place in the first hundred. Okay, one way it is good, but now you estimate yourself how many private colleges are there in the state of Andhra Pradesh. The figure is as many as two, ten, or even, even above. And uh, among them, it's only but it's an indication that because the ranking is majorly based upon other things major consideration is given to research activities only related to research not only exactly the publications, but also projects conducted, funds raised through research from the government, from the industry, collaborations with other institutions, etc. Everything will be counted. And all majorly, they, it is all, they are all related to research activities only. And hence, uh, it's an open secret now that the research is somewhat neglected in bulk of the pharmacy institutions, not only in Andhra Pradesh, in the entire country, in the entire country. And hence, it is the time that we should enhance the quality and quantity of research activities in all our academic institutions, then only good recognition and progress will be there. And so research in pharmacy, so you know very well that it is a multidisciplinary research. 
including several several types of research for example i made a list attempted to made a list of the research topics of interest in pharmacy in general the the major part is related to drug discovery and development research drug discovery and development okay this is a multidisciplinary research the pharmacy graduates post graduates and phd's can certainly involve to a lot large extent in this process and which majorly concerned with the initial new chemical entity or a new drug development development of the nc so today now the new drugs are majorly major source of new drugs is still the organic synthesis okay it's a very old concept that right? all chemical drugs they are called they are being developed by organic synthesis only and hence we should have a strong foundation in organic synthesis and chemical technology for large scale production etc and uh, then the organic drug that is synthesized should of course further be characterized but one big, one important source is organic synthesis only and uh, the next source is uh, for the biologicals that is uh, these are the type of drugs different from chemical drugs which are normally produced by by microorganisms or other or other living bodies they are normally the protein and peptide type of drugs they are highly sensitive and uh, these in recent years recent in the sense last 15 20 years several of these protein and peptide drugs enzyme drugs under this category have been developed and they are all found to be the life saving drugs uh, and modern wonderful drugs and the source for all these drugs modern drugs is the biotechnology means and hence biotechnology you cannot separate from pharmacy it is a very good origin now for the wonderful drugs called biologics and the third and important other source is phytochemical and herbal since long since long the source is well known and several wonderful phytochemicals phytomolecules are been isolated and put to use and herbal formulations herbal technology has developed a lot and like this these three are the important areas of research needed for developing a, a drug molecule and uh, the pharmacy teachers are, are all well equipped well versed with the basic uh, science technology involved in the three types of uh, researches and hence it is not that every institution should develop all the three areas depending upon the interest depending upon the expertise depending upon the infrastructural facilities needed an institution or a teacher can select any one or more and try to excel in that particular area and contribute uh, your your might and the another important uh, stage or type of research is uh, nca chemical new chemical entity characterization so unless the the chemical developed is continue is further characterized by all means means the characterization chemically physical means and by for biological characterization pharmacokinetic characterization and all for all these uh, characterizations again we require a lot of research this is another type of research which several institutions uh, can engage in c then analytical method development this is always a demanding research area because without analytical method you cannot further proceed in the development of uh, a drug and delivery system and hence certainly analysis is considered as uh, the backbone for pharmacy research and what wherever whatever is the topic you are working the analysis forms the first step and it's very important and hence we should know some basic principles concepts of analytical 
method development. Then pre-formulation and formulation development, okay, this ultimately drug will be supplied as a dosage form or a delivery system and hence uh, what information is needed for its uh, formulation is all derived in pre-formulation stage and then formulation development in different types of dosage forms etc. And uh, then process development and stability testing, quality control and uh, in process quality control and, uh, and methods used in this process and their development also form an interesting area of uh, the pharmacy research. Like this you have several areas interesting to pharmacy uh, and uh, the clinical and preclinical. So this is a preclinical include the pharmacological, toxicological, ADME assessment of the drug molecule developed in experimental animals and hence this is a, again an important area of research I certainly contribute and a good amount of work is being done normally in research laboratories of higher order and academic academics also academic institutions should also take up research in this area easily and then clinical studies next so this is organized as a phase one phase two phase three phase four and uh, even, even after marketing the drug still there is a need for research that type of research is known as a pharmacovigilance and a clinical evaluation of the prescription treatments that happen in hospitals and that is also a type of research and outcomes research and how the treatment given in a hospital will be uh, beneficial how much it is beneficial to the quality of life improving the quality of the patient quality of life of patient etc such other aspects the outcomes research is also a type of research that is very much needed and now so we are all uh, considering now the research and we are all capable of doing the research and then what qualities a researcher should have the first one is a knowledgeable and competent this is very important unless you have the knowledge in the selected area like if your area of interest is doing research in biotechnological means for a conversion of an ngm say for example so unless you should, unless you have a knowledge, a thorough knowledge in this area and you yourself acquire expertise, then only that is one of the important character, first character. Then should have considerable interest in research. If there is no interest, nobody can help. So initially we should have first, inherently we should be interested in doing the research. And here the people may ask, put a question, what benefit I will get by doing the research? By doing the research, immediately you may not be getting any benefit in the sense that your management may not increase the salary. That is immediate benefit, it may not be there. But in the long range, in the long range, all uh, recognitions, etc., will be achieved only by research. And hence, uh, we should create interest in research. And when once you created interest, certainly you will succeed in doing the good quality research and expertise in the field of interest and skillful it's very important skillful so expertise knowledge and skillful in all the techniques methodologies etc then only success then only you will be considered a good researcher so here it is so the purpose of our programs designed as four year two year etc we form inform is to give sufficient training to you such that all the skills needed in, needed for research will be developed for the purpose only because pharmacy is a research based science and industry also research based so even in the undergraduate program the concept of research is introduced since long the projects work will be given research work will be given in the final year etc in mpharm MPharm is designated itself as a, a research program by research only, not only simply by exam and hence one year full dissertation, you know. So there is a lot of scope that MPharm is the best period in which a candidate can develop the skills of research and orient himself towards research. And later on, 
he can do a good quality research land afterwards so like this skill is very much important certain disciplines they require thorough training in skills so for example experimental pharmacology so definitely a lot of skill is needed in organizing the experiments etc and uh, similarly for uh, the, uh, any other science instrumentation skills so use of instruments okay, properly everything involves some skill and si next is uh, critical but flexible to listen to others critical thinking is needed and uh, flexibility is needed in listening to others suppose is some say that always whatever they think that is the final they don't listen to others and that should not be when we are wrong we should accept when others are good okay other concept is good we have to welcome it and uh, good communication skills is uh, also important good oral communication good writing skills are very much important for a good researcher a researcher can do excellent work in the laboratory but if you do not know how to communicate writtenly and how to communicate orally he may not be successful and uh, available and approachable okay that means those experts are available experts many are there but whether how far they are approachable how they are available when requirement is there so if a teacher says that i am available only before 4 o'clock in the college after four i will never turn up to the college he is not a good teacher so teacher should be available at all particular researchers should research guide should be available at all times reasonable times even in the night when necessary the student may contact and consult or may require his presence he should be able to go and hence these are the essential qualities that every teacher should develop uh, for doing good quality research and then no principles and good practices in research now what is what is meant by this uh, research practice now it is clear i think so there are certain principles uh, drafted as uh, principle one whatever is the research done the most important principle is that absence of bias okay there should not be any scope of introducing bias into your experimental investigation okay even sometimes unknowingly bias may enter into your investigation or sometimes knowingly the bias may be introduced because research sometimes research is also related to commercial there is some commercial benefit and hence benefit in the sense the research that is being carried out by the industry okay and hence everyone because of the benefit they have the investigator may try to in you introduce some bias and say that and see that his product will his concept will come come out as the best among the competitors such sort of bias should be avoided okay favorism otherwise favor, okay you should not favor any treatment favor any person any subject like and you should not manipulate the result these all types of bias okay and hence why this bias should be avoided so all the results obtained should be unbiased unbiased only and when bias is there the rules of probability and the statistical comparisons cannot be applied because all these statistical methods they are basically dependent on the concept of probability so probability okay that means uh, the rules of probability are applicable only when you when it is unbiased so probability okay? so suppose you take a, a coin and if you buy, if you toss it there is a possibility of getting head and tail each having 0.5 of probability this is when the coin is unbiased suppose if you, mm -hmm. we we manipulate and bias a coin can we make it a biased coin yes certainly you can do it by applying coating of a magnetic material over one surface if you apply and then if you toss it that coated surface will always go down and hence every time you get the other surface and hence 
that means the probability rule of uh, getting a head tail is half is not applicable because the coin is disturbed so the, similarly all the the rules of probability are applicable only when the experiment is done in an unbiased manner and for that for that there are ways and means developed in, uh, in uh, investigations first one is the randomization in experimental studies random experimental studies normally involve giving an intervention or a drug or a treatment to subjects or animals whatever it is and in such a case okay now allotment of the products to the experimental units should be at random should be at random following a random mechanism using random number tables or simply by lottery mechanism you can avail you can allot the treatments to the experimental units treatment means for example your drug drug products or doses etc experimental units mean the animals or subjects or in a, in a laboratory for example if you have a chemical uh, experiment okay investigating the effect of uh, say uh, four catalyst four catalyst on the yield of a chemical reaction so you you set up chemical reaction chemical reactions and then identify the catalyst a b c and then catalyst a is randomly allotted to the different experimental unit experimental unit is a, a, a set of materials needed to conduct the experiment like a b if you heat it a b at 40 degrees you will get a b product that is simple experiment such a case okay so you set up such, such so depending upon the replication needed set up such times such units and then one temperature is allotted at random to one like the randomization you can follow in clinical studies it is known as a blinding blinding it avoids the bias so binding blinding means that is uh, the person investigating is not knowing what is the product normally a placebo is prepared a placebo is uh, a product similar to the test product but it do not contain any drug in appearance in other every quality it is similar without drug and hence it is mixed up and uh, then the distribution is made so nobody knows the investigator knows do not know what is the play which one is a placebo which one is a which one is a, a, a real product so such a blinding techniques uh, can be used in clinical studies and hence uh, in several times the use of the concept of placebo has come into testing testing of drug products and this concept of placebo is only to avoid the bias in the results <clears throat> and hence an experiment uh, when conducted without any bias that is the aim first next second principle is related to error control okay error so what is this error and before that why should we do an experiment at all experimental investigation so the purpose of doing any experiment is to find out the unknown true value to find out unknown true value that is the purpose of doing any experiment whatever is the type okay for example you have developed a product an extract extract to product and we are, we are now you don't know what is the effect of this what is the effect of this okay and hence effect and the measure of effect measure of the effect you don't know and hence you have to carry out an investigation a testing method to find
Uh, sorry for the disturbance. There is some problem with the power supply here. Now it is rectified. Now coming back to our presentation, we are discussing about the principle two related to error. So the purpose of doing any experiment is to know the unknown parameter, which may be considered as the effect of a drug, yield of a chemical reaction, etc. And hence we do a number of experiments to give a measure of this unknown parameter. With the result, we have two quantities now, the true parameter and the estimated parameter. And error is the difference between these two, these two things. One is uh, the estimated parameter and the other is uh, the true value. So this is error. And error should be minimum. Normally, you have to design your experiment in such a way that error should be minimum. Why you should have a minimum error for accurate results in the data, for accurate accuracy, to improve the accuracy, so the result is said to be accurate when the error is very low. And for sensible comparisons also, we need the error should be very low. What is meant by the sensible comparison? Normally, research involve, research involve comparison of treatments, two drugs, two drug products, two temperatures, etc. And hence, there will be some difference in the effect of the two comparisons, two treatments. But when the error is more, this error will shadow the little difference between the treatments with the result, you will be, the result will be misleading. And hence, error, error should always be kept minimum. And for how it can be kept minimum, we'll see now. Now, error is due to several reasons. And the first reason is that random factors will influence. That means they are also known as the chance factors and they are beyond our control. They will normally occur in any investigation and uh, they influence the result. With the result, when an experiment is repeated, say, n number of times, not all the n results, n number of results are equal. You find an inherent difference. This difference is otherwise known as the chance variation. So chance variation will always be there. There is no way to control the chance variation. The other error is due to assignable reasons. Assignable. That means you can uh, assign one or other reason for this error. And, and hence it is controlled. And hence to reduce the error, this type of error by assignable factor should be controlled properly. And hence for that purpose, so there are several means that are followed in experimentation generally. And for example, one such thing is standardization. So all methods, techniques, procedures are to be standardized before use and should be used as per a defined SOP. That is important. SOP is not only important in industry for getting the same quality, but in research is more important to get the accurate reproducible result. So all the important uh, inputs like uh, the methods, techniques, procedures ought to be standardized first. Then validation. This is another concept which you studied in industrial pharmacy and that is uh, equally important in laboratory. So validation of instruments and equipment, they should be done before use in research. So several times, okay, you have a simple equipment only, we ignore them. Almost in every type of work, daily you need a balance and balance for weighing small quantities. And hence, where is the guarantee that the balance is working properly, especially in institutions? If it is a well-developed research institution, they will take care on a routine basis, the concept of validation, validating. They will assign to some company and uh, those uh, service providers will come and validate all the equipment. But in institutions, this sort of work is less. So when balance itself is not uh, 
proper not working in a reproducible manner you cannot get correct values and later on without without checking balance and there is no point in later on worrying about your result this is happened like this why why and hence uh, then acquire skill there is another important point okay acquire necessary skills so skills means uh, develop the investigator whether he may be a student he may be a, a teacher he may be a principal or director when he want to do some experiment necessarily you should acquire good skill try and try to learn skills this is very important because with changing time with changing time the skills required will be changing when i am in the college okay and later on in the service okay in the college and in the early ages of in the early stages of teaching i have not exposed to any hplc system okay and i have never exposed to this type of uh, delivering uh, an online uh, okay lecture earlier then necessarily i have to develop a lot and that what i am doing during this vacation period or lockdown period especially online these online programs okay and later on i did, i involved in some programs so that i am no acquainted with the skill of using the online technology to some extent not fully in the same manner anyone who want to establish career in research should certainly equip himself with the skills that's why teachers now and then should should be exposed to training for skill development it's not simply listening to some lectures you will develop the skill practice is more needed and hence you have to go to a place where such a piece is available piece of equipment is available and then get yourself trained that way the skill improvement is needed and then the third principle is <coughs> study design fact these are the factors related to study design that all to be controlled to reduce error so error also depends upon the study design and for that again in the design itself you should uh, consider the concept of randomization random allotment and use of controls so controls are very much helpful to reduce the error and adequate replication or repetition is very much needed and uh, in the classroom okay now you can ask the students to do only once at the most uh, a second time confirmation test is done because of the time constraint you will not ask the student to do 10 times or 8 times like that a simple experiment but in research whether it is a simple one or a complex one certainly you have to repeat a number of times repeat means under identical conditions under identical conditions you have to repeat okay a number of times that number of times if you repeat 10 times you will get the 10 replications 10 values representing the same thing so you can process that data and hence the sample size which is designated by small n always is otherwise related to number of replications and replications is there always even in the simple testing procedures like all of you are very much familiar with the quality control tests of doses form particularly the tablets <coughs> so you see that for disintegration itself the number of replications is six times to read so six tablets are to be tested and if it is a weight variation test the procedure says that take 20 tablets so sample size is 20 there if 20 are not available for the quality control purpose take at least 10 but nowhere you find uh, using of two three tablets for these tests similarly for dissolution the test is too critical and initially the sample size is 6 and it is a three stage test test and hence depending upon the performance you will be going to 12 to another 6 in the second stage and in the third stage another 12 total 24 observations based upon that final decision will be taken like that 
sample size is there always and in research also you should not contend by doing the excellent only once or twice so and how many times you have to do an experiment what is the sample size now in the next slide we will discuss that methods of determining the sample size whatever is the type of the experiment then similarly con local control so earlier in the second line you find one control use of controls this is controls means uh, you can keep uh, in the experiment in the experiments for example especially for the evaluation of drug effects so one group of animals should uh, be kept as control okay or blank without any drug or placebo and uh, the other group the test group so control group test group such meanings are applied but here local control means it is related to it is related to the design design of experiments so that means in the local the concept of local control is when there is a lot of variability in the experimental units normally variability then the experimental units are divided into groups which are called blocks which are more homogeneous in nature and hence all the treatments are tested in each and every block to nullify the influence of the variability present in the experimental units this is called local control and uh, variability is uh, much in the case of biological specimens so if you are doing uh, a biological experiment either in animal or the human subjects clinical clinical science okay and no individual no two individuals uh, can be considered as identical perfect there will be a lot of variation from subject to subject and hence <coughs> in the division the ultimate division is each subject or each animal is considered as uh, homogeneous in itself and is considered as a block or a group so you have to test all the treatments like all the products in all the subjects or all the sub uh, animals like this this is the principle of local control in the laboratory also in the laboratories also if you don't find the material of uniform quality uniform quality you can divide that material into groups in which the quality is uniform and then use it for testing all the treatment means all the treatment should be tested in each and every part of this uh, uh, okay our group then similarly crossover <coughs> this is uh, you are well familiar with this word crossover design means the, some designs it is it is planned in such a way that uh, the crossover means exchange exchange of treatments so test and uh, dose so first uh, one group receives uh, the first group receives the test and the second group receives the standard again after a wash out period the first group receives the standard and the second group receives the test like this it is the purpose of crossover is also to nullify the inter subject variability and that means uh, one of the important factor responsible for error is the inter subject variability especially in uh, in biological testing or uh, variability that is present in the experimental units is one important consideration <coughs> so like this uh, with these uh, things you can control the error next is uh, principle 4 so we should uh, be able to measure the error because error quantification is very much needed in research uh, to serve the purpose of comparison i told you earlier and hence how to measure the error that is possible so different uh, measures of error are available and for all these measures what is needed is uh, the repetition repeat unless it is repeated a number of times it is not possible to measure error okay if you repeat only once if you do only once there is no possibility of knowing the error if you repeat two times there is little possibility the difference is taken as the error but it's not correct and you have to repeat several times under identical condition from the data you can calculate parameters like uh, estimates like mean standard deviation standard error pgs limits all these are the measures of error many times in research you find the use of standard deviation and standard error unless you associate these two quantities with your data the data will not be considered as standard so there are now a good journal okay 
if you submit any data table or discussion without sd and sc values they will reject it is not possible so because that do not indicate the validity of your uh, a uh, result how much error is included you cannot assess without these quantities and hence you should always whenever you give the mean value like x bar always you should associate with either standard deviation or standard error now it is better you have to calculate standard error because standard deviation it is a measure of error in the individual observation whereas standard error is a measure of error in the average value that is more appropriate and then all the statistical tests okay require the measure of error this is because statistical test means you are familiar with the t test of significance and other tests of significance and all these involve comparison of the observed difference with the error so you remember the formula for t test okay t t the numerator you have the x bar 1 minus x bar 2 that is a difference in the observed data the difference in the observed treatments two treatments that is divided by the error standard error okay. square root sigma by m so that means similarly whatever test you take inherently it involve the concept of comparing the observed difference with the against error and hence if the error is low you can make out sensible comparisons if the error is large that will overshadow the real differences in the averages you will be leading to false conclusions similarly as a sample size increases error decreases that is the principle as a error you, our purpose is always to reduce error and hence one way is to increase the sample size but to what extent you can go on increasing go on increasing because you have to consider some other concepts also if it is not a, a test cannot be a laboratory test there is no point in asking to repeat 100 times there is no need okay but uh, and hence in all the experimental investigations like laboratory uh, experiments or animal experiments or even clinical experiments related to human subjects bioavailable etc you have to find out what is the sample size it's not like 100000 times etc and then but whereas in some other type of studies like observational studies observational studies okay now there surveys for example another type of study there you can go on increasing the large number of n then only you will find the correct assessment okay and uh, and hence there are ways and means of uh, knowing the sample size <clears throat> so the principle five is uh, determination of sample size so sample size is number of replications needed under identical conditions and now the certain amount of data or particulars are needed for assessing the sample size needed what are they there are three important things that you should have first fix up so one is accuracy or error in the estimates that you can tolerate that the investigator can he himself fix up i i i can tolerate only 1% error okay. another investigator if we want that as yes, i can tolerate 20% error so which one is considered more appropriate error should always be kept to minimum and hence 1% error may be more appropriate than the 10% and 20% error because with less error it is possible to do sensible comparisons if you keep the error it's if your aim itself is a more error okay it's not a good design and hence the accuracy or error measure is fixed the difference between the true value and the estimated value you have to first fix up that this much only i need i can tolerate for making meaningful conclusion and then a level of significance <coughs> level of significance this means what this level of significance is related to the probability of committing errors probability of committing type 1 error which is more serious that means a, a correct hypothesis is rejected a significant difference is rejected and is notified as a non significant <coughs> to minimize that type of error okay uh, so you have to fix up the probability so in uh, statistical tests you studied the level of significance indicated by two letters ls it is fixed at low level again 1% and 5% 
okay and uh, 5% means in 5% times in 5% decisions okay 5% may go wrong but the remaining 95% time the decision taken is correct so this level of significance you have to fix up initially so for several studies 5% is optimum and uh, suppose the investigator and uh, and the type of project demand a more stringent rule so you can even fix up one and then degree of variability present in the data so inherent, what is inherent variability in the population and the data so that also you should have and either the variability in the population is not possible to know but when you are handling random samples the variability in the sample is taken as a measure of the variability in the population population so then then what uh, we are doing the when you get the data by conducting an experiment the data obtained is always considered as a random sample only and hence in all the experimental investigations if you repeat uh, n number of times small n number of times the n data points are considered as a random sample withdrawn from a big population and hence these three quantities should be known uh, to get the required sample size and hence here is a simple uh, uh, example is shown here so an investigator wanted to estimate the mean birth weight of population the standard deviation from the sample was known to be 450 grams and the expected difference between the population mean and the sample mean was considered as 30 grams then the sample size n needed is so when this is the formula which you have to remember sample size n is equal to z square what is the z is standard normal variate and uh, at the chosen uh, level of significance and sigma is uh, the standard deviation of the population or sam random sample and d is uh, the difference tolerated d and hence in the given example this is at five percent level of significance this value of standard normal variate z is 1.96 square and uh, the value of the sam uh, standard deviation is given as 450 grams and difference tolerated is 30 so total if you expand this equation it is equal to 864 so the sample size here required for investigation this investigation is not this investigation is a type of hospital investigation okay observations only simple measurements only and hence a large number of unless uh, they consider this much a large sample of data so they have to find out this this many births and weigh the baby and then uh, the result will be accurate so in this way sample size needed is calculated for example the sample size needed is okay 864 and uh, when you want to the sample size for testing the difference in the two values two means okay to establish this much difference or for the such purposes this n is equal to in the same way 2 into z alpha and sigma by d whole square <clears throat> like this there are other simple uh, means applicable to different cases and hence is very much useful to know the sample size and the principle six that means <coughs> it is a clearly defined objective and scope of the research this is very important clearly defined objective so and scope so the objective should be clearly defined based on what based on literature survey only there is no point that immediately you can start your research work first you have to select an area selection of area is also important but in the beginning in the first few slides we have seen pharmacy include a lot variety of disciplines and hence you select an area selection of this area also depends upon your knowledge your capability and facilities available that is very important infrastructure available so unless you have the adequate infrastructure you cannot uh, do the meaningful work 
ओके फॉर एग्जांपल इन द एरिया ऑफ से सिंपल फार्मास्यूटिक्स ओके पीपल नाउ थिंक अबाउट थिंक अबाउट नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी नैनो पार्टिकल्स नैनो सिस्टम्स आर लाइपोसोम्स एक्सेट्रा ओके एंड द फैसिलिटीज they will be having a normal laboratory which is not even adequate for running b form m form effectively in such a laboratory without having a lyophilizer without having a, a, a size recorder okay and without having a super centrifuge etc how can we do the meaningful research in this selected area for nanotechnology and hence to select an area so first uh, we have to think about your knowledge your expertise how much work you have done in this area how much skill you have in this area so if you do not have the proper skills yes you should definitely try to improve your skills go somewhere where this sort of research is being done in an organization get yourself trained and get the infrastructure needed in your institution and then equip yourself with the skill and knowledge then you have to identify the area and then you have to make a thorough survey of the literature literature means the status of knowledge nationally internationally on the subject you have chosen okay on the subject you have chosen learn thoroughly read read thoroughly and gather information and from the literature only from the thorough literature survey only you identify the areas where further work can be done okay to get new knowledge to get the new knowledge this is because the purpose of research is to generate new knowledge new knowledge what is this new knowledge means depending upon your field of interest okay new knowledge developing a new instrument developing a new technology developing a new okay method analytical method etc okay anything something new means it is not known earlier and has to know whether it is there in the literature in the known earlier or not you have to make a thorough literature survey so based on the literature survey only only you have to identify the object object and aim so two things are important aim and object you should define okay aim refers to the overall object of your investigation say for example a pharmaceutics teacher may today be interested in enhancing the solubility character or bioavailability character of a drug x so his objective is aim is uh, to enhance the dissolution and bioavailability of a drug x okay and objective is to enhance the dissolution and bioavailability there are so many techniques available there are so many techniques so much literature is there after thoroughly verifying the literature etc so you can identify a technique one or two techniques where there is not much work is done or no work is done and propose them so in the objective the objective again starts with enhancing the dissolution and bioavailability of drugs so x through using nanotechnology through using nano sizing say for example you can identify because by by the time nanotechnology has not been studied so extensively as the other techniques is it and i where you should have some scope to do new year things okay then identify similarly based upon the literature only techniques you identify methods you identify excipients you identify process you identify earlier all these nano particles are prepared by so these the techniques now you think about the possibility of using any other technique a better technique your investigation results in a new year technique like that you have to think after going through the literature on the topic of your interest you have to design your aim and objective that is very very important when once uh, 
you are clear with object object means in the definition of object you will highlight what things you have to do what things you have to do so when you are very clear in the object it is considered you you are successful halfway in the project and hence a clear definition of object to understanding of the object to scope scope means the area over which the results are applicable so that uh, okay sometimes it may have a, a narrow scope it is applicable only in this situation only if the situation is slightly different you cannot apply and hence you have to think about in this way and develop the object to and scope so next is uh, this research for research literature survey is the backbone <coughs> literature survey and uh, now for selecting a project okay uh, one general study which you have to do and do do is in your own interest is so of course we need funds for conducting research definitely but don't think that your management or your principal will be made available will give you use of funds if they give salary it is good no, don't expect that they give all the funding needed for research and hence you should also think about the funding for research for that there are several funding agencies governmental funding agencies like dbt dsc or icmr ugc act etc you know very well and hence uh, you have to submit proposals but for submission of proposal there is a basic requirement inherently that you should first understand what are the thrust areas of research for them so if you submit project on in your own way in your own interested area that interest that area may not be interested to them and hence these bodies will be announcing now and then or continuously the thrust areas which the research has to be concentrated so you verify and
ओके ना ओके ओके हेलो हाँ सॉरी फॉर दी डिस्टरबेंस अगेन पावर सप्लाई एंड नाउ कमिंग टू दी प्रोग्राम नाउ वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट दी लिटरेचर सर्वे इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ लिटरेचर सर्वे for that those who seek who want to seek the uh, finance funds from the funding agencies you should also be first thorough with their uh, first areas of research and accordingly how to plan and now coming to the uh, seventh principle in the uh, research is exhaustive literature survey you have to carry out and there are three different uh, types of sources one is the primary sources that means journals so excellent journals in every discipline are available online and offline so you have to make a thorough search of these journals and the journal is the source giving the best information original information and hence you have to always uh, go through the original articles related to you and uh, update your knowledge this other type of journals sources are known as the secondary sources these are the abstracts so there are so many agencies which will prepare abstracts so abstracts for ready reference for initial search you can go through but abstracts do not or may not reflect totally the correct picture in the sense the abstract many times is prepared is uh, summarized by other groups not necessarily the, the investigator and hence some concepts some data some points may be omitted in the abstract but at the same time for the initial search is always made by going through the abstracts available next is the tertiary source tertiary source is the textbooks standard textbooks on the subject so textbooks also provide good information and good knowledge on the topic what is the knowledge so far available but you have to take a little care the textbooks that give exhaustive information on various topics standard textbooks i uh, have to refer and they are different they are very much available in every discipline and you have to go through that only before uh, even developing the objectives and based on the literature areas where further work can be done or identified and the objectives and plan accordingly will be developed now principle 8 this is uh, methodologies and protocols are to be described in detail the success of execution of any research proposal depends upon these two things one is uh, methodologies and the other is protocols and methodologies form a part of the protocols protocol means a recipe for your work means everything is given black and white in clear statements without any confusion right from the aim and objective every aspect should be spelled out clearly until the closing of the project until you achieve the required target whereas methodologies it concerns with the methods that you are going to follow 
in the proposal. That means the purpose is why you need so much care in particular details, exact details are needed in these two things. The purpose is to permit any other person to repeat and get the same result. That's very important. That's very important. Then your research work is pakka. And uh, several times in the colleges, we ignore the concept of following the rigidly the same methodologies and publishing them in the paper. Also, you should you should give every detail. Otherwise, it is not accepted. Technical details, point to point. The purpose is any other person who is skillful in doing that work, if we repeat, you should get the same result. And it's a normal observation that in the pharmacy colleges, the projects will be going on every year. A, a new batch of m students will be coming out. And there are some labs and some uh, teachers who will ask them to continue the earlier work in a, in a slightly different mode. But when he repeat the earlier work, the student is not getting the same result. Every time the result is different. What is the reason? What is the reason? The reason is that methodologies have not been followed throughout by both the persons. And it is very essential that you have to use official as far as possible. But for several things, official procedures are not possible, not available. And hence other standard methods, uh, which will be having a, a good reference. By looking at the reference, you can judge, others can judge what is the soundness of this method or to be used only. If it is a new method developed by the investigator himself, now he has to validate it thoroughly. And all the validations are to be notified and then only they may be used. Then all methods are to be validated for reproducibility and accuracy. These are the two important criteria. Validation needed for every method. It may be a simple task, but validation for reproducibility, all methods. Methods include procedures, instruments, etc. All are should be tested for reproducibility, means giving the same result when used repeatedly and accuracy. Then SOPs are very vital. So SOPs are to be developed, written and followed for all methods, methods and protocols. So it's not enough. If you just follow an official, if you state that an official method is followed or a standard method is followed, what is that? SOP should be designed and kept in the records such that any time any person want to repeat the experiment, same SOP has to be followed. This is just as SOPs will be sub supplied by the manufacturer for various uh, instruments and equipments. And you follow that and with any little modification you made to suit your lab, you will notify and write down an SOP and you have to follow the same SOP, etc. So SOPs are very important in research to get the reproducible result with accuracy. Then all the specifications and details of drugs used, other materials used, instruments used, and animals used, and then similarly interventions. Intervention means drug that is introduced or any treatment given may everything should be specified in clear sentences. And a statistical test that you are going to use it, that also should be identified which methods you want to use okay and everything should be specified initially and then like this the methodology and protocol forms an important task in organizing good research and uh, the protocols are to be described in detail and approved by the committees known as ethical committees before commencing the work and depending upon the type of the work, the protocols are to be approved by the IEC, Institutional Ethical Ethics Committee, in the case of clinical study, which is normally done in human subjects under the guidance of a doctor. 
and all the works involving the animals, experimental animals, because a lot of pharmacology, toxicology, ADMG, and other studies uh, require the animals, and those protocols should be approved by Institutional Animal Ethics Committee and uh, following all the guidelines prescribed in GCP and uh, uh, the GLP, etc. And the laboratory studies, lab, other than an using animals and uh, clinic human subjects, there will be a number of laboratory studies also needed, needed in the laboratory. They, are, they may be physical, chemical, microbiological and other uh, processing steps. And in such cases, the protocol should also be approved by what? By a committee. That committee sometimes is called a research committee or a college committee constituted by the college only and uh, and uh, suitable as per the as per uh, the clinical guidelines the composition of iec is well defined similarly the composition of iaec is also well defined but for college committee flexibility is there for research and pc has uh, in the revised regulations of b form and m form they coined the term like a college committee, which is responsible with the functioning of the, verifying the functioning of the entire college, all activities. So research also is one activity. So when a person is doing any research in a college, the college should first know, okay, what is the research, type of research is being done by every faculty and whether, and the college has the responsibility to control the ethics needed in the research, whether the research, whether it is a laboratory or whatever type, whether it is being done by following the ethical principles and the general guidelines of research and other principles, whether they are obeying or not. And even because when once uh, the research done by a faculty in a particular college is announced, then suppose if it is done without the notice of the principal or the research committee, and if something uh, unwanted, unhappy finding is there or result is there on in the observed with this presentation or thesis, and it will damage the reputation of the college. And hence, the colleges can constitute in their own interest, in the interest of the research teachers, okay, a research committee. Can be in all the universities, uh, such provision is there, research committees are there, and uh, they will go through, and uh, the guidance will be given for the teachers. So, like this, whatever the proposal or methodology is written, protocol written, should be approved by somebody. Why this somebody is uh, they examine thoroughly every aspect involved, every the technological aspects, scientific aspects, and uh, societal aspects ethical aspects okay and uh, and hence they give clearance and clearance has to be preserved also this is this is one uh, uh, one thing that is needed for maintaining good quality in the research investigations then principle 10 <coughs> documentation needed and preserved so certain amount of documentation is needed what is that documentation so project proposal, when first, uh, before starting any project work, research work, okay, you have to prepare a PAKKA project proposal and similarly a protocol and uh, minutes of the ethical committee because these two things will be approved by some committee, whether it is ethical committees or whether it is a research committees at the college level. So it will be approved and hence minutes of the ethical committees and all meetings held for approval of these proposals. Uh, sometimes a midterm review will be conducted, sometimes final review will be conducted and reports are to be submitted to the funding agencies, sponsors, with the industry sponsor, etc. Presentations are needed. So everything like this several times. The meetings will be held, presentations will be asked, then you have to preserve the minutes of all these meetings. Then all letters of approvals should be preserved properly. And consent letters, 
of the participants in the case of clinical studies because clinical studies are conducted uh, in human subjects so the regulating bodies impose uh, stringent regulations and similarly icmr has also given guidelines stringent guidelines uh, because it should not harm the subjects involved in the study and hence the person should uh, voluntarily agree to participate in the study so for the purpose a prescribed format of consent letters are available and uh, the investigators should gather and take the consent whenever whenever it is involved the human uh, subjects and reports of the project work with all the details and results should be preserved details every detail and then any other document the institution or the sponsor sponsor needs that should be developed by the investigator researcher and should be preserved appropriately <coughs> principle 11 this is a selection of study design <coughs> the selection of study design so study earlier also have seen that the study design appropriate to the investigation has to be selected has to be selected because the purpose is that the results obtained are reliable okay and uh, relevant to the project and error should be minimum and all precautions the design should uh, take care and hence selection of design suitable design is very important concept in the research methodologies and there are several types of designs available types of designs for experimental studies experimental studies means uh, laboratory investigations this may be experiment so experimental studies include uh, the introduction of uh, an intervention intervention may be a drug or a device or a treatment may be introduced and hence it may be a laboratory study it may be an animal study it may even be a clinical study so in all these uh, experimental uh, studies you have the standard designs available which are very much useful for pharmacy research of different types completely randomized design like crd randomized block design like rbd and a latin square design lsd and factorial designs so such a variety of designs are available we will discuss a bit later about these designs and their applications then similarly designs for clinical studies clinical studies means the difference is only in human subjects so the study is carried out and there are again two types one is experimental among them some are known as experimental the meaning of experimental I explained you in the earlier slide and many are observational many are observational studies in the observation studies just the effects are observed only without any intervention without any intervention giving any drug or treatment by the investigator sometimes they may be undergoing the normal treatment in a hospital but normally by the investigator will not inter uh, interfere by giving a drug or any other material and it's only observation is made several such observational studies are also very much useful uh, in the area of uh, this pharmacy practice and similarly, ex coming to experimental studies so an, an intervention is uh, given and the, its effect is observed to a group of subjects and uh, effect is observed include a control normally a control group means without drug very much be needed to make uh, evaluation of drugs and drug products and comparing and assessing the uh, efficacy of the drug this type of control is very much needed and that too in the biological clinical and biological studies the control is very much important because there is a lot of intersubject variation when compared to the physical and chemical methods where there may not be that much inherent variability even then in such studies also controls 
are useful to check the error and subject is randomly assigned to the groups okay random randomness is followed and clinical trials are also experimental studies only several of the clinical studies they are experimental and hence uh, now we will see about For experimental studies, whether it is laboratory, animal, or clinical, the standard designs available are like this. One is a completely randomized design, popularly known as CRD. So this is uh, there will be only one factor you can study at. One factor is possible to study. Okay, like effect of temperature on the yield of a chemical reaction, effect of this bind, the given binder on the dissolution rate of a tablet, like that. Effect of pH on the yield of a fermentation product. Okay. Like that only one factor is possible to study. But the factor can be replicated any number of times. Replicated any number. Replication is flexible. You can repeat the experiment uh, six times, eight times, ten times. It is possible. And the design is very simple. So the first the treatments are First, the treatments are identified. Uh, treatment, uh, this word treatment refers to the experimental conditions that are to be followed in an experiment. Suppose if we are doing, if we want to know the effect of temperature, so that factor has to be studied. Temperature is one of the factor that has to be studied minimum at two levels. Minimum at two levels. Then only you could know the effect. Or it may also be studied at more levels. In the CRD, a suitable number of replication is decided, like six times, eight times, etc. And hence, each temper you have to select the treatments like, like temperatures, four temperatures is selected, 40, 50, 60, 80. Each temperature has to be repeated four times. And hence, four temperature, each time each replicated four times, four into four, 16 experiments you have to conduct. And in the chemical and uh, and in the physical, chemical, pharmaceutical studies, many times the experimental material of uniform quality is easily available for the steam studies, etc. for the required number of trials, and hence you can use CRD. Because in the CRD, the units are considered as homogeneous, no heterogeneity, and hence they are divided into they are Lined and numbered as 1, 2, 3 to 16, and temperature 40 is taken first temperature, and randomly four numbers are selected and assigned this treatment. Like that, all the four treatments are assigned to the 16 experimental units at random each four times. This is known as randomization. Replication is also there, but local control, the concept is not used because it is not. That's why restriction is there. This is applicable only when the experimental units are more homogeneous. <clears throat> then, or otherwise, sometimes the variability is also not known. In such case, you cannot divide, and hence this technique is followed. And the whatever result you find, the it is due to it, the, that means the result in the form of uh, the variability in the data. The 16 experiments you did and the result means 16 values you will get, 16 data points. The 16 data points will never be equal. There will be a lot of variation. So that variation is due to what? So the total variation in the data is due to one is the chance random factors known as chance variability, which will always be there and you cannot control. Then next is the real. Real means due to variability due to real factor. That is due to treatment. So the total variability is divided into two components due to these two. And they are, and these two are tested by an F ratio test of significance. Greater variance by lesser variance. A significant F ratio indicate that the effect of real factor, real variance is significant. And hence, the factor temperature is said to have a significant effect. 
so the like this at the end one test of significance in science when the sample size is very low the test more widely used is known as a t test of significance and the response is measured or average or average out and hence the average is calculated that means average yield corresponding to 40 degrees average yield corresponding to 60 degrees like that four x the average averages are calculated and they are compared by average or based upon the variance not on the average and hence it is known as the analysis of variance technique so analysis of this data obtained in the crd is analyzed by anova analysis of variance one way classification the data is divided only based upon one variable the variable here is temperature like that you have to evaluate the effect of four binders on the dissolution rate of tablet so four binders each binder may be repeated six times so four into 60 say for example uh, so many units you need and a tablet say for example if it is a ibuprofen tablet okay material ibuprofen of uh, uniform quality can easily be made available for 20 for 20 or 25 runs and hence crd is applicable to evaluate the effect of uh, four temperatures are seen to evaluate the effect of uh, pH on the degradation of a drug substance, etc. All these can be possible. It is most widely used uh, design, simple design. And then <coughs> next is randomized block design, RBD. Here the experimental units are divided into more homogeneous groups. That means when the experimental units are heterogeneous and based upon the factor of variability, factor of heterogeneity. We have to divide the experimental units into more homogeneous groups. In a chemical laboratory, all experiments carried out at a pH, a particular pH like 2, are considered as one block. And all those experiments which are conducted at pH 4 is considered a separate block. Okay. Because the pH 4 is different from pH 2. And hence, based upon the pH, the experiments are divided into groups. Experiments having pH 2, experiments having pH 4 like that. And uh, similarly, in the say, laboratory, and coming to animal studies, okay, or human studies. So now based upon the, the, they are not uniform, so heterogeneity will be there. The factor of response, heterogeneity like, uh, you have age is one important factor, age. And hence, based upon the age, if you want, if your investigation demand, the testing in human subjects, okay, broadly. So if you include all age groups, all age groups, then the scope of the investigation will be more wide. So for that purpose, to have a wide scope of application, now include children also below the age of 12 and adults between 16 and 24 or like that. And then youth, uh, the adults and then Geriatric, like that, depending upon the age, you can divide into three or four categories. So each category is somewhat homogeneous when compared to other and test the drug in all the groups. So it is a randomized block design. Ultimate division of human subjects and animals is individually, each one is unique in itself, is different from other, and hence ultimate division is taking each subject or animal as a as a unit, as a group, and then conducting the experiment in all these subjects like this. And this is the most widely used in pharmacy and biological and clinical research. And in agricultural research, the entire development of this is happening in agricultural research where the fertility of the land varies. <clears throat> and hence, in testing the products uh, normally, the experiments, the land is divided into segments based upon the fertility and then tested in each and every segment. So the two factors are to be tested in, in all the groups. And uh, for a division, when two factors are involved, normally this can be used when uh, two factors are involved. Many times in pharmacy research, you come across with the two factors, not a single factor. Then one factor is taken as a basis for division of experiments like pH, and other factor uh, can be included like a temperature to know its effect. So here, and uh, like this, two factors can be tested simultaneously. And uh, so two factors, when they are included, okay, 
to evaluate, for example, to evaluate the effect of temperature and pH and the yield of a chemical reaction. Okay. Two factors are the temperature and pH. Yield is the response. And all experiments conducted at a particular pH are considered as block. And in each block, the reaction is carried out at the selected four temperatures. Total, if you have four blocks, if you have the four replication for each, and four into four, 16 experiments you have to do, 16 trials you have to do, and 16 observations representing the yield uh, will be observed. And you find a lot of variability in the 16 observations. The total variability in the 16 observations is due to three factors now. One is the chance. As I said, chance is always be there. And the next one is uh, the variability due to, due to the block means here variability due to pH in the said case. And the next is variability due to the treatment temperature. <clears throat> so the total variation is uh, due to these three factors. And uh, the total variation is then divided into these uh, three components. The part that arises due to chance, part that arises due to block means pH, part that is arises due to treatment means temperature. Now, to find out the significance of the pH effects and temperature effects, the variance due to block is compared against the chance. Similarly, the variance due to treatment is again compared against the chance. So, chance variability. And hence, at the end, two F ratio tests are to be done to take two decisions regarding the significance of the black effects, treatment effects. So, anyway, you are finding the effect of two two factors and uh, so many examples are written simple and this type of design is also useful in a bioclone study of, uh, and uh, pharmacological evaluations also and uh, other examples are listed and experimental is much reduced that is the major advantage of this design is experimental error is much reduced because of the application of what principle local control principle <coughs> Now then the Latin square, LSD. So this is here, a further extension of that is, the experimental units are divided based upon uh, two factors of variability in two directions using based upon the two factors of variability, the experiments units are divided into, into groups. And, and then the treatment is tested once in each group and once in each block and once in each row. Because these, when two factors are involved, normally one factor is assigned uh, to rows and the other factor is assigned to column. It is a, it is a table shown. It is a simple table shown. Now the, the subject one, two, three, four. Okay. That means, and uh, four subjects are taken and then subject one, subject two, subject three, it is sub each one is considered as a block. Four, four subjects, four blocks. And in each block, all the four products are tested. This is the design for bioavailability testing, bioequivalent testing. So A, B, C, D products are allotted. And uh, the column wise, M1, M2, M3 stands for stands for the period, the month, okay, designated month, time gap. And hence, the allotment is done in such a way that uh, all the products should appear in each block, in each row, in each row and in each column. That means appear in each subject, appear in each uh, time period. So in the same manner, you can take other things. Okay. So uh, one factor may be, one factor may be, say for example, in a chemical laboratory, one factor may be uh, the pH, another factor may be temperature, and a third factor is assigned. What is the third factor? Here, it because it's a bi in the shown table, it is a bioequivalent testing. And if it is a chemical testing, if you have a third factor, take that third factor as the treatment. The third factor may be a catalyst. Maybe a catalyst or some other factor which influences the reaction. So there are four levels of catalyst or four types of catalysts may be tested. In that way, A, B, C, D refers to either type of catalyst or concentration of catalyst defined and then allotment is in the same manner. So you can easily check in each column and in each row 
each treatment a b like that they are appearing only once and hence this is a this is again a suitable design for all types of testings <clears throat> and here there are two total there are three factors to be evaluated at a time three factors so three factors said the examples include the like in our bioequivalence testing what are the three factors involved one is the product that what you want to compare the second is subject based upon the intersubject variability test and third one is the time trend so bio bioequivalence test also requires the consideration of the time trend etc and hence in the case of chemical okay ph temperature catalyst etc now many times we come across with three factors like this and hence a best design for to test the significance of three factors is a latin square design okay and hence the total if you get only again 4 into 4 16 values only but now the 16 values the difference available there variability in 16 values is due to uh, how many four components one is due to chance factors that is always there you cannot avoid and the other is one is due to block means temperature and another is uh, due to another factor block ph and third one is the treatment okay catalyst in the case of okay like that uh, and in the case of the bioequivalence study if we use lsd major first one is that product difference whether difference is there in the products a b c d you can also find out whether intersubject variability is significant or not similarly whether time trend has significant influence or not you can also decide on that so after dividing the variability into four components the last three components like variability due to ph variability due to temperature variability due to treat uh, due to catalyst each one separately tested against uh, chance by conducting an f ratio test so at the end you require three f ratio tests to be conducted and based upon the results three decisions can be taken regarding the significance of the three factors involved and hence simultaneously you can study the three factors <clears throat> and then so Uh, whether one factor two factor three factor studies they are normally conducted okay as per uh, those designs discussed earlier they are all called the simple experiments they are called simple experiments in the sense that they find, uh, they give you only the effects only not interaction effects it is not possible by such designs okay they are the designs to determine the simple effects eh? effect of a b c like that only but in experimental investigations when two factors are there in addition to the individual main effect individual uh, effect of a and b there will always be an interaction or combined effect of e b in any experiment and hence you should also be able to find out what is the combined effect of two factors and for that purpose the experiments available are known as the factorial experiments so this is uh, for fact factorial experiments or the experiments in which the simultaneously the effects of several factors and their interactions can be assessed individual effects as well as their interaction effects can be observed okay example for example to determine the effect of uh, pressure and and the lubricant on the hardness of a tablet formulation the two factors are pressure and the lubricant individually they have their own effects but combined they also they can produce an effect on the hardness similarly in the other case also okay and uh, to determine the effect of any factor that factor has to be studied minimum at two levels minimum at two levels and hence in the factorial studies many times the levels level of any factor is two only and then a number of factors may be varied number of factors may be varied it may be two or three or even more and hence they are indicated as 2 to the power of n 2 to the power of n factorial experiment 2 2 is 
the minimum levels required and n is the number of factors n is the number of if it is two two factors and two levels it is known as two to the power of two factorial design and similarly if you have two levels again but three factors three factors it is two to the power of three and hence the factorial experiments are designated like this and are applicable in all types of studies and uh, then in the ex in the factorial experiments you have to understand how to develop the treatments because here using the two or three factors in which you are interested and the levels in which you want to study and you have to generate certain treatments and the number of treatments required depends upon whether it is a 2 to the power 2 or 2 to the power of 3. So in the case of 2 factor 2 level means it is 2 to the power of 2. So 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 4 and hence you need 4 selected combinations of the two factors A and B and their levels. Okay and hence they are designated as 1 A B A B. Just to remember them. <laughs> A, a simple rule I am telling you to how to write down the specific treatments. Treatment means the conditions under which the experiment has to be carried out. So those treatments can be simply written. For writing them, first you take one, write one, then introduce one, one factor A and then introduce another factor B, then take the product AB like that. Okay. So this uh, notation has to be interpreted like this. Absence of a letter, absence of a letter indicate that it is uh, at the first level. It is at the first level because you need two levels. It is at the first level. Presence of a letter indicate that it is at the second level. Okay. And hence based upon that notation. So in the, in the treatment one, there is no A, no B mentioned. That means both factors are at the first level only. It does not mean zero. Whatever is the first level selected, it will be at first level. Okay. And uh, in the treatment called A, the factor A is at second level. And uh, factor B is at first level. These uh, second level, first level is, are also known as lower level and higher levels. Okay? And similar so treatment B. B is present and hence B is at the higher level or second level and A is at the first level and A, B, both are there and hence both are at the second level. So in this way, <coughs> you can design the treatments. When once these are treatments, when once four treatments are written, now for design, you have to go back again because four treatments are there and normally in the variability will be there to some extent and hence if it is a chemical laboratory experiment necessarily you have to go to the rbd so the experiment is this is only treatment writing the factorial experiments are also needed to be conducted as per a crd or uh, rbd or lsd depending upon the, the variability character of the experimental units and hence this uh, factorial experiments is you the plan of work means what how many treatments you need to conduct with the minimum number of experimentation you should derive the maximum information in the sense that you can assess the individual effects of the factors involved and the combined effects of the factors involved for that purpose you need the selected four combinations and apply them as per an rbd or l or uh, crd and then you get the data and in the data analysis so you have to find out the individual effects combined efforts by solving so here it is uh, the in, explain the principle only these are given but there is a procedure of ANOVA to be done and also variance can be done easily so and also variance is a very important technique in research methodology particularly experimental methodology experimental investigations and uh, in all the whatever is the design ultimately the data is analyzed by ANOVA only. So this data and also also require ANOVA. The ANOVA to evaluate the effect of factor A in fact in general first whether the factors involved are significant or not that is first part. The second part is the analysis extended further to know whether the main fact main effect due to A 
is significant, whether main effect due to B is significant, whether the combined effect AB is significant or not. So that all the effects you have to find out. That is known as ANOVA analysis of factorial design. And the same thing can be extended to the power of 3. 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 2 to the power of 8. So you need 8 combinations of the 3 selected factors. And for that also in the same manner you can write down. Start with 1, then A and B and take the product AB. Then introduce the C third factor. And then multiply the C with the above. C is there. Then C. Then AC, BC, ABC. There are 8. There are eight uh, treatments and uh, interpretation is uh, the same manner. When a letter is uh, present means it is at the second level. When a letter is absent means it is at zero level. And hence the, the levels are to be carefully fixed. And le levels are to be carefully fixed here to find out the effects on combined effects. Okay. <clears throat> now coming next is... Uh, this is... Uh, <clears throat> So we discussed the general designs. This is a crossover design. So uh, one group received the, we already considered several times the crossover design, you know very well. And uh, that is exchange vice versa only. And uh, the advantage is that intersubject uh, variation, time effects can be carried over uniformly and uh, then nullified. And hence, in all biological experimentation, Crossover is the best design suggested. And then coming to that is all experimental part. Now, experimental design. So, in the uh, clinical studies, several of the investigations they are based upon observations only. And hence, you have the observational studies are needed. So, subjects are just observed for the parameters to be measured. That's all. And no intervention is given. And uh, description uh, under this again, there are descriptive studies. There are descriptive studies, as the term itself indicates, to describe the characteristic of the study, study subjects without interven intervention. And there will be no hypothesis testing like comparisons, etc. So, in the descriptive study, just what is done is okay, the patients or subjects are observed. To record the characteristics. For example, to describe the characteristics of a rare disease. Now, now we are facing a dangerous problem in the recent past. Still, it is continuing. We don't know how long it will continue. COVID-19, and uh, no one is now clear about what are the symptoms and characteristics of a COVID-19 patient. And we are hearing in the news. Okay. And uh, day after day, some research groups, doctors, okay, and uh, they will be going on telling many things, okay, as uh, this, this, this. And hence, this is uh, describing the characteristics of a COVID-19 patient, okay. That is uh, observation only. Observation only. Observe the patient carefully and uh, find out, find out what are the characteristics. And uh, some measurements, parameters are to be some parameters may be measured. Like parameters that are measured normally include like weight, body temperature, okay. Like simple parameters which give a lot of information. If the patient, if it, is, it has impact, impact on growth, altering the physiological setup, you know, definitely it will be reflected in the form of weight loss. And hence, such simple measurements or whatever description, depending upon the disease, are to be described carefully using the technical scientific terms. It is known as a descriptive study. And then types of descriptive studies. Again, types are there. One is a case report. Case report. So that means uh, description of an individual subject. Single case, several times. The first time when uh, the investigator or a doctor comes across across uh, a rare event a rare disease single observed in a single patient first time so he went on observing him and make out a description so a single based upon a single such is known as a case report 
and it is the least publishable article means in medical literature many times the case reports form the starting point for identifying a, a disease okay sometimes somewhere it starts it's not very much popular and hence somebody will be making out a report on a rare uh, in observed in one subject only it is known as a, a case report so case report in a way is considered as the first report okay on a particular disease or event that is uh, published in medical or any other literature and then there is there is known as a case series an extension of that is case series and in this case series description of many cases with the same disease now many patients are suffering with covid 19 and hence if you observe all those many group group of people and go on went on describing the characteristics of this disease it comes under now the case series because first report a long back happened long back happened and hence it is now what uh, whatever reports you find today they are all known as the uh, case series reports on covid see the same manner with the others so description of many cases with the same uh, disease and another type is known as the cross sectional study cross sectional study that means study of a of a random sample of patients at a single time point so presently thing okay let's say for example presently if you study the same the symptoms are description of covid 19 patients okay in india say for example at this moment means identify the time present time okay it is known as a cross sectional study a random sample is collected because always you cannot uh, study the entire population this is numerous and also waste of resources so samples are worked out and a sample of uh, okay randomly selected randomly selected patient suffering from this disease at a single time point such studies are known as cross sectional study and uh, these are best designs to study the prevalence of a disease prevalent there and hence they are known as the prevalence studies how this disease is prevalent in india how this disease is prevalent in china in us so this is the prevalence studies how many and uh, not only the numbers and conditions everything with the prevalence studies so spread of this disease description of this disease with regard to various parameters of the patient okay like age wise sex wise okay like disease wise simultaneously what other diseases uh, they are suffering with etc all these possibilities to assess them so people now say that a diabetic patient is more prone to more prone to covid 19 and hence a study has to be conducted presently verifying the patients not only for covid 19 but also for the information on diabetes his condition etc and then after studying a, a random sample or sample you can make out such correlations okay and hence uh, so these are the best designs what is what is what which one the cross sectional study several of the investigations in this area are under this type only going on continuously in hospitals and the case control study <coughs> case control study it is a group of patients with a disease is compared with a group of people without this disease a control group so in the earlier case it is a, they study only the group suffering with the disease now a control group is also selected the people without having this disease and then compared so in the same manner it is a descriptive study only and case controls so case control study so the control is also introduced to study the influence suppose when you are want to find out the risk factors say for example to establish the significance of the risk factor in the disease covid say i am telling diabetes and covid so if you want to assess that you have to take two types of populations one is one is the patient suffering with both both disease means diabetes as well as covid and another is those non diabetics suffering with covid and study the characters 
and uh, risk factors, further risk factors assigned. So this type of study is uh, known as uh, a case control study, which is uh, which may, several times the investigators with some purpose will be doing this. So both the groups are followed, okay, sometimes uh, backward in time to determine the association between the risk factor. So when you say backward, means it is retrospective. And hence, the way to follow the retrospective is for any retrospective study, whether it is a hospital or industry, only source of retrospective study is documentation. If you document well, retrospective validation in industry, what they examine, what has already been completed long back. So the only way to find out that is to verify that is only through going through the documentation. That's why documentation is the most important. In the same manner for these retrospective studies, okay, the documentation is needed. Hospital should maintain a, a document describing all these well documented Documentation is needed, otherwise, retrospective study cannot be already over long. Okay, backward in time. So, to determine the association between the risk factors involved, etc. And in the same manner, in the same way, if you go forward, forward means coming in the future. So, continuing to the near future. And uh, so it is that is known as a cohort study. Here it is a group of uh, persons are identified a group of persons are identified this group is normally called a cohort a term that is derived from military sources the others first time so cohort they use it to mean a group of soldiers moving in one direction to fight against somebody and uh, so it is uh, like a, a cohort so a, a group of people only a group of people are identified um, and exposed to the risk factors and followed forward in time that means it is prospective okay and hence outcomes are measured outcomes results are measured this type of study is otherwise known as a, a cohort study okay and uh, these are all uh, the descriptive studies normally used and then <coughs> depending upon the situation so the other principles remain the same whether it is an experimental design or descriptive study or observational study the other general principles which you are studying are the same. And then after that, we have we have the uh, principle 12. This is all. okay, okay. Hmm. So this is what is this principle 12? <coughs> so report writing. This is equally important. So whatever you do, it should be documented properly. This is a report writing. So this is otherwise known as the scientific, it is equal to scientific paper writing. So whatever you do, everything should be documented appropriately for various purposes, including for publication purpose also. And hence, the various components involved in this report writing is a title, appropriate title you have to fix up in the beginning that should reflect the content of the project appropriately. The object that should also reflect the objective and aim of the project and uh, what is expected out of these. Everything should be in a, in a condensed form, it should be a title should be coined. Okay, and sometimes the titles uh, may somewhat be elaborated to give a clear idea about what type of work it include and hence the title should be carefully planned okay and so the next is introduction Introdu introduction should be some basis for your work so it is a literature review highlighting the current status on the topic you selected both national international level with good references with good sources and find out, you discuss the salient features of the literature or the concepts associated with your topic. And then identifying the problems, slowly enter into, while doing so, enter into what are the problems, questions to be solved. All these things should be identified in this part of introduction. Okay. And hence, this introduction forms very critical. In a way, it is briefly, Technically, 
reviewing the need for your work need for your work what is the current status and what is the need for further work those such things are to be highlighted in this part next is objectives from that you slowly enter into aim and objective clearly define the aim and objectives okay with simple sentences good english that is also needed very much and uh, describe uh, the objectives of the study then comes the description of the materials that is very important with specification complete specification in pharmacy you will be using many many different types of uh, materials in pharmaceutics you will be using chemicals okay yeah, drugs excipients with complete specification to what standard they come they can confirm and uh, in the case of excipients also what are the standards in terms of certain critical uh, uh, characters like if it is a polymer so normally you have to give the either the degree of polymerization data or sometimes the viscosity data everything or molecular weight those things are to be clearly indicated and a drug <coughs> indicate to which standard it confirms whether it is an official if you say ip so it should confirm to the specifications given in ip for all characters and uh, ensure pre- before getting before including you ensure that whether it fulfill or not before using of course you have to test and confirm yourself that the drug material and other excipients confirm to the specifications required or not and all those things you have to clearly mention under the this uh, materials with all the specifications clearly then same in the same manner description of uh, special equipments used special equipments used if any that should be that should be clearly identified what is the make what is the model okay everything should be specified if you use a hplc you know what is the make model what is the detector used etc all should be specified and uh, then in the case of special equipment only <clears throat> and then methodologies with the detail every detail you should give in the methodology okay the purpose we discussed earlier so any any one who want to repeat can easily repeat and get the same result that is important and then presentation of results in form of tables graphs pictures etc very much needed lot of information can be presented in the form of graphs and pictures and condensed tables instead of giving the raw data these things you should you should make out and discussion of results giving uh, sources reason giving reasons explanations clearly mechanisms etc in the discussion never repeat the result again in words repeat the result again in word there is no need table is already there graph is already there but what it include what it uh, what is the inference you made and in which way this is this is related to the earlier findings whether you know, this finding is in accordance with the earlier finding or not if it is different in which way it is different whether it is substantiate whether it is a new significant result you got or not so such things because always you have to discuss in the light of the earlier data and highlighting the importance of your data and your result that will be more impressive and uh, you have to go on and in fact uh, the discussion part is uh, most critical that will reflect your talents the discussion part of an article or in the report it should be so with proper explanations and the mechanisms involved etc elaborately you have to uh discuss the results <clears throat> and conclusions with significant findings what are the significant findings again you have to consolidate condense and identify the significance of okay etc and appropriate references references you have to give and references should uh, be followed a standard way standard pattern only you have to follow and uniform for all references if your uh, report to contain 50 references okay? 15 references are to be written in the same style and uh, uniformly you have to correctly you have to identify and then uh, in the case of publication the same way publication also needs 
and only thing is that you have to give an abstract okay abstract is also needed and sometimes uh, pictorial abstract is asked by some journals and uh, with keywords appropriate keywords and uh, the source of finding okay and all those things and uh, you have to okay you have to indicate in the in the pub, in the report or publication any time like this the report writing is also a technical one it's not that much simple with practice only you will learn and today <clears throat> for writing report and for submission of uh, proposals either projects or after completion of the project for report submission or for publication or for applying for a patent etc uh, now today what is uh, needed is that you should uh, use good scientific uh, language good english and write in your own way try to develop that skill of writing your in your own way and one way is that you remember that for all these uh, cases no and check for plagiarism is there check for plagiarism is there and hence you have to practice carefully check for earlier it is not there even today also several universities they have introduced anti plagiarism check but in still in several universities there is no such a thing so if you introduce that and even whether it is there or not some journals introduce or some not even or otherwise sometimes even the evaluator when it is peer reviewed by the evaluator the evaluator they themselves can submit to peer review and as uh, they check plagiarism check and based upon that they will write the report and hence it is very important that uh, you should develop the skill of writing good english in your own words okay and uh, that's very important for guidance also you have to you have to while writing itself uh, so many online uh, sources are there for check okay the plagiarism check you can make use of them and improve uh, we can try to improve our english and writing skills etc and hence the writing technical report is equally important and saving so research okay with writing report and submission of report to sponsors to funding agency to university for the award of a degree etc it's a uh, one thing that we can conclude here but further what is needed is that your research should in which way help the institution and yourself that is achieved only when you have a good publication first your aim is at one time in the evaluation they used to uh, ask the questions like uh, how many papers you have published okay some number later on what is the total citation index etc later on they are asking uh, how many patents you have generated okay and hence the weightage is given for patenting so patentable research so it certainly all research if you follow certain principles if you follow certain norms can be patented so in industry initially we discussed about the importance of research in industry the industry they always aim at patentability only for their business purpose but so far in academics long time the academicians ignored the patentability that's why the patents coming out from academic institutions are very very meager and later on when the process of accreditations and approvals have come into picture okay and then uh, the academician academic institutions also concentrating more on academic and patenting research so for patent it should be really new and novel and application oriented routine works cannot be patented in the sense why i am using the routine works is so in pharmacy since long there is a provision for one year full research work in the pg degree and 3 to 4 years research work in phd degree it is there since long so many m farm seats are also increased thousands of students are coming out with m farm degree hundreds of phds are coming in the country but again the research they are done is uh, in several reports said that it is quite routine no novelty no new thing is involved and hence no credit so to to credit your 
dissertation or your thesis or your publication you should think about patentability means original new research innovative research so the purpose of research is uh, to create to make the teacher and student to think innovatively think uh, newly so you should come up with innovative concepts and implement it. so innovation is the driving force for success and hence all teachers okay you keep it in mind research is very important for all of us and uh, for making a good research first you make an attempt to expertise in the chosen area learn theory and practice subject about your specialization your topic only improve your skills acquire the infrastructure and don't be under the impression that if it is not available in our college i can go to some other college some other place it's not at least 90% of the facility required should be available in your institution then only good research can be turned out if you depend depend on others for everything everything it's not at all possible so there are times it is what is happening what is happening so certainly a part of that which a highly specialized work which you cannot do in the institution routinely available equipment you can go certainly and uh, get uh, trained there and personally you do that research in instruct your students to do that research personally it, and what is happening unfortunately is that the samples will be sent to some organization they will give you the data many times interpretation also given by them only thing is that is copied in the dissertation or paper and uh, sometimes they acknowledge with, with thanks sometimes even without acknowledgement to the support now this type of practice unethical and everything you have to do you have to do in your own way and uh, expert training you can receive certainly you can use some facility not if not available in our college institution but you go there and stay there for 6 months 1 year and get trained and do the job and so then only quality of research will improve and similarly associate with industry associate with industry means academy in industry interaction that does not mean sending your students to industry and uh, washing up your hands that is what is again happening all call many i cannot say all but some of the several of the colleges they send the students uh, to industry it's not wrong you can send certainly but follow them whether they are doing properly whether they what type of work they are doing or interact with them continuously okay interact discuss with the industry guide and improve your skill and a part of the work let them repeat in the college then uh, things will improve instead what is happening is unfortunate that several people the mpom students they would do projects in industry using the term interaction with industry it's good term is good interaction with industry but when they come to college neither the student nor the academy guide knows about what the work is okay and hence is unfortunate so avoid that a meaningful interaction you can develop means you go there observe you do yourself you send your student along with the student you find time to go there go then only meaningful research will be done and select the appropriate industry don't say that uh, they cannot permit okay you have to impress them and uh, if they permit you join with them with a good industry which is really interested in research and taking their training the students etc so they are wonderful institutions and if you join hands with them certainly the capability of uh, our research will improve and in the, like this there are ways and means of doing but whatever you do what is uh, we required is uh, a good quality research and then <clears throat> principle 13 it is uh, regulatory considerations now yes regulatory considerations are there now because uh, the drugs they are ultimately used in human subjects because our our field concerned with pharmacy majorly concerned with human usage of drugs of course similar drugs are used in vet- veterinary medicine okay also there and uh, some though you may not call them as drug but some materials developed may also be used in agricultural science etc 
okay and because our science is directly related to drugs and which are used in human subjects for their welfare etc and hence in conducting the research at every stage not only in the manufacturing and sale but even at the stage of uh, uh, the conducting research it is the origin for the product and you know that all the products are to be of good quality and hence quality starts the the starting point for quality of a product is in the origin formulation development which is all otherwise the development or discovery of a new drug evaluation of a new drug by all means okay in the beginning we discussed all this is to be controlled appropriately otherwise the governments through the regulating bodies they have the great responsibility to ensure that the drugs available to their people are safe and effective and of good quality for these three important characters of a medication like okay one is the efficacy safety and quality so to create these things these characters in the medicine product and at every stage it should be controlled the government has done the same thing and uh, the glp good laboratory practices so it concerns with uh, how to conduct the laboratory what care you have to exercise precautions you have to take about uh, the laboratory experiments and of the type of uh, non animal as well as animal both are included and uh, excellent uh, guidelines are given regarding how to conduct out document etc and uh, so those principles the whatever principles we have discussed so far the majority of them are taken from that only that that has to be applied in our research and uh, so because research include both laboratory and clinical now so gcp good clinical practices or clinical trials they are available now government every government everywhere globally guidelines are prescribed to safeguard not only the drug developed but also to safeguard the humans participating as particip humans involved in the study to safeguard their health more care is taken by the regulating bodies with regard to the gcp rather than glp and similarly bodies like I ich has given certain several guidelines individually for every step if you want to develop an analytical method that is only a part of drug development and discovery but i say is guidelines are there for every step so what care what things you have to control in developing a new method of a method development for applying to api dosage form for stability studies okay like that for bioanalysis what care you have to take exercise etc so guidelines are there for each and every step individually in I ICH and uh, WHO also have set several guidelines for each and every step like this uh, regulatory control is there over the way in which the research investigations are to be executed right from planned and executed and how much care you have to take in collecting the data because the data should be reliable so okay the, the ultimate aim is the data because everything is based everything the conclusions we made are all based on data and hence the data should be reliable uh, for that purpose only we have to follow the good practices of research just as we discussed during the last one hour and uh, then certainly uh, it will help you in generating the good validated reliable data based upon which the principles are formed products are formed and usage is commanded etc <clears throat> and hence the research is now considered as utmost important for teachers and students and uh, <clears throat> there are so many books available in the in the general statistics so many since long there is a uh, shortfall i can say that though i am teaching this subject uh, over more than uh, so before retirement itself 30 years and after retirement 10 years so during the last 40 years this topic was taught 
to the students of m farm and uh, okay in university and other private colleges etc they i i noticed that there is a no standard textbook okay that is written applied to pharmacy pharmacy and hence while in service i could not spend time but now uh, i could uh, write and make it possible to bring out a test book that is a test book of research methodologies and <clears throat> biostatistics for pharmacy students and uh, so i am happy that the feedback from certain principals and colleges are good they are using and you can also have a look at this book which will be useful for acquiring more information about uh, the this topic and uh, and uh, can guide the students also can guide etc this is because <coughs> in the revised b form syllabus in the revised b form syllabus okay uh, in the eighth semester there is a paper b form itself the title is the same research methodologies but surprisingly though uh, i fought with the the syllabus framers the committee they deleted it they, they put the theory only but they made it as a non university exam i think uh, several of you might have already noticed in the the pc syllabus eighth uh, eighth semester b form the first paper is this only research methodologies but uh, the unfortunateness is that they made it as a non university exam because the institution they themselves can conduct an exam like sessional exam and uh, award some marks and send it to so several several colleges universities already accepted and started some universities uh, may have a control over such things also it is allowed they may make it as a board of studies resolution that yes it can be as a university exam why i am pointing out is when you put it as university exam the teachers and students will uh, somewhat be more careful rather than when you take out as a non university exam because the non university exam i know i it is but i cannot discuss openly so how it is happening in some colleges about the non university examinations or the other subjects like mathematics okay and uh, say for example environmental science etc the same thing is happening to this method though it is a very very important subject for the beginners to because b form is in the beginning and later on m form phd m form program is by research phd is completely by research and hence uh, this book and hence my sincere request to all the principals and uh, teachers handling this paper in the 8th semester and m form also and uh, whether it is a university examination or a non university examination give utmost weightage for teaching and training your students uh, in this subject because which is very much needed needed for the future of the research in pharmacy okay and hence this subject is available now since 3 years back i bought it out so with this i think i once again thank all of you for your patient listening and uh, there there are some disturbances two times because of the power supply and sometimes it is beyond our control okay so supply but uh, this is my okay i have not uh, thought of uh, how break in power supply otherwise i could have connected morning itself uh, uh, the from my mobile net you can make so oh, because uh, okay some disturbance is there i hope even though the disturbance is there it is not uh, not anyway disturbed the understanding of the subject continuously so i thank you all for your patient hearing and i take this opportunity to thank uh, dr jagadish panda Uh, principal of uh, ragu college of pharmacy visakhapatnam for providing me the first and the best best opportunity to interact uh, online with the faculty of uh, pharmacy and i am thankful to him thank you jagdish uh, and also i have to thank all uh, the coordinators school and chair of ragu college 
for the wonderful program they are starting and initiated our one day is over and i wish uh, the guests and the participants good luck in the coming uh, six days also so that the week long seven day dp program will be a grand success thank you all thank, thank you. you sir thank you sir thank you for your valuable informative session sir i will summarize your session sir actually uh, sir, uh, this, uh, hmm. sir uh, before uh, you tell me, tell me. summarize and you thank you okay you letter uh, ready for the question sir sir actually yes, i have given open, open. I have given yes. sir i have given uh, hmm. in chat box sir but uh, there is no hmm. questions uh, uh, then it was not then it was not completed okay. now you, you are. anyway you are So anyway, you announce that they can discuss any time. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, um, meanwhile, I will summarize the session, mm -hmm. sir. Actually, sir has given a vast, huge information, okay. sir. Hats off you, your strength and stamina, sir. Such a huge information you have given, sir. And you have uh, discussed about the importance of research work uh, in industry and academics, sir. and uh, sir has discussed about uh, the importance of uh, research work in uh, certain areas like drug discovery and research and preclinical clinical studies and sir also discussed about the uh, the qualities of an ideal uh, researcher and also sir explained about uh, some principles regarding the research work uh, some of them are uh, like uh, absence of bias errors control study design factors to be controlled to reduce the errors measure of error is possible and determination of sample size clearly defined objective and scope of research exhaustive literature survey methodologies and protocols are to be described in detail protocols to be described in detail and more 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 and more are there sir protocols to be described in detail and approved by ethical committees before commencing of the work and documentation needed and preserved selection of some study designs there are a lot of designs we have like uh, sir has explained like uh, completely randomized design design of clinical studies and latin square design so much information sir has given and uh, and moreover uh, report writing and uh, finally sir has explained about regulatory considerations like glp gcp ich and who guidelines and sir has uh, uh, suggested one book related to methodologies and biostatistics written by dr kpr choudhury sir so very valuable information sir thank you sir uh, thank you so much sir for your valuable and very much informative session and which will helpful definitely to our faculty fraternity throughout the india and all over the world sir thank you so much sir uh, is there thank any you. questions thank from you, the audience uh, participants to anybody <coughs> can, uh, in the write in the live comment so that we will uh, here we can uh, flash in the board so that uh, uh, the honorable okay. guest today speaker uh, the, okay. he will uh, answer the questions any question here Jyotir, meanwhile, one question is there from Aparn Lakshmi. Okay. Is it possible okay. to conduct? Tell me, man. Is it possible to conduct clinical hmm. trial conduct on it? same drug? Clinical trial on same drug in different on? countries. Okay. On on no. same drug, sir, in different yes, countries. Yes, same okay, 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 sir. okay. I understand. In fact, it is very much needed. in phase 3 studies what is done is the same thing the same drug be tested in different countries because it is applicable not only in one country it is not enough if you test it in india you have to test it in australia uk switzerland that's why phase 3 studies are consuming a lot of time and money etc and how you see that the uh, covid drug some drugs they announced they are also in phase 3 phase 3 is in the several countries they have to be tested because otherwise you cannot conclude that it is useful everywhere okay so general procedure is also there in the phase 1 study a small number in one hospital is uh, considered 
in the uh, phase 2 the number is increased to 3000 and 3000 in the same area okay hospital may be different but within the our land only it will be done but in the phase 3 the very purpose of that is the same product has to be tested in different countries in different races etc and that is very essential otherwise it will not be accepted which takes a lot of time so several of the uh, us companies they conduct the clinical trials in india as well as in other countries including china also now the problem has come in recent recent times because of the covid 19 uh, the other issues but what is needed is the companies will uh, conduct tests in different lands otherwise it is not accepted this is a very valuable question uh, don't impression that clinical one drug can be done only in one place or like that the same drug drug is the same if it is uh, something different drug how can you take it granted the phase one study result the phase one study result phase two study result and in fact what the results obtained with the uh, preclinical and laboratory investigations is all related to this drug x only and then the same drug x has to be studied in other other lands also then only it will be complete is it clear madam so in fact it is needed in fact it is needed Any other question? Not except. Yes. Any other question? No, in the absence of question, I have one question. <laughs> How many participants have uh, attended this lecture? Can uh, the organizers find out the answer? Sir, more than 100. What, sir, sir? Joginder. Sir, more than 100, sir. More than sir, 100. More. Yes, okay, hundred teacher and hundred okay? again. I think uh, you will get the information. No, no sir, it is no, 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 no. Is it? no. Kar -kar, you will get that information. Who are the participants? Because anyway, yes, you will sir, be yeah. giving an e certificate or something like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. and uh, sir. you can put an online test. Uh, you can also put an online test. Yes, sir. Feedback form in the feedback some, form some, itself, uh, we are putting some questions, sir. Uh, Yes, some questions. That is that is enough. Okay, so minimum of hundred hundred teachers will be listening today's program like that. Okay, that's yes. good. Yes, good sir. number. Yes, sir. Because the one problem that I noticed is simultaneously uh, several institutions and organizations are conducting various programs. I know that today itself I noticed uh, there are five different. Uh, programs there seminars are, are going on today today at the same time so people cannot cannot attend all okay they will distribute depend so but but 100 is a good good figure so yes sir. i congratulate and compliment all of you thank you sir hello thank, no, you, sir. thank, thank you, you sir thank you very much sir thank you sir. Uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Around so, 600 members are registered, sir. Luck. And they all uh, go through the YouTube and okay. they download it. And, uh, they listen it as per their convenience, sir. This is what happens the practice in general. Okay. Those okay. who will come, okay. uh, they will then okay. they only with you, sir. Otherwise, those who are uh, actually the view, they, they won't okay. come here, sir. Okay. Then it's good. No, I thought so. You don't say 100. Sir. So, nearly total sir, actually, actually, you tell always if anybody let me ask. Okay, sir. Actually, we have received uh, two not four responses. Sir. Okay. Actually, okay. till now we have received mm. two not four responses. Sir. Mm. So yes. more than two hundred. Uh, so already uh, received already. responses. Uh, that, that means the two hundred already responded. Okay. So uh, what uh, Jagdish Panda said is correct. That way you have to project. So the total registrations are crossing eight seven hundred. Uh, total registration. So that's uh, about six hundred. Okay, that's very yes, sir. About okay, we have six hundred or six hundred. Yes, that's very interesting. Link we have entered the data, sir. With us, sir. Okay, that is good because no, so that they can leisure any time. They can download and leisure any time. Okay, then it's good. So, so 
so if we can say that more than 600 people teachers uh, has followed this lecture or like this program yes, okay sir. that's good yes, sir. good bigger good bigger thank you sir thank you okay. for thank you all thank, thank you, you dear participants thank you thank you one and all for coming to the session and tomorrow again 10:00 at 10:30 there will be wonderful session by the dr munir ahmed or uh, the director of the you know ragu uh, rajiv gandhi health university and uh, so on education planning for an online and offline okay teaching so that will be on the program sir today this program is very wonderful very vast information and also it is a great uh, i feel very you know happy that all the you know participants today they are lucky enough that having you like a person who authored a, a book on this topic he only delivered a lecture that is a great opportunity for everyone so definitely everyone have enjoyed the wonderful uh, this one and definitely we have in our library and still uh, in the coming session only they are that pca new pca batch is going to the eighth semester so definitely we already we procured and still more number of the you know um, tight more number of volumes will be procured sir definitely and it is uh, our great privilege and uh, being we are the alumni of andhra university and you are our teacher we feel very proud and uh, great uh, that we are enough uh, blessed we feel sir thank you sir thank you very much sir Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So this is what today's session. Tomorrow we'll have a session by 10:30 a.m. The link will be. This is Jogendra Kumar for today's signing off.